again to The Blueprints. This is Canada's Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Schmale, member of Parliament for Halliburton, Fourth Lake Sprock, with new content for you every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We do appreciate you joining us here today. We ask that you like, comment, subscribe, share this program. I guarantee you this is something the mainstream media isn't talking about, so we need to get the message out, and we know you do know two friends, and they know two friends, and together we can do that. Great content for you again today, and if you can't listen or watch it right this second, down Download it, listen to it on platforms like Castbox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, you name it, it is out there. So we're going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, one is pretty dire news from the tourism industry. Uh, a recent article here shows that a third of Canadian tourism operators are closing down or selling. But before we get to that, an even more disturbing piece of information came out last week that the, the federal government awarded a $133,000 contract to a company whose main consultant is pretty much the co-owner. It's a Montreal company called Community Media Advocacy Center. That consultant, I'm not going to say his name because he doesn't deserve it, but the consultant has a long history of anti-Semitic, racist tweets all over his social media. This is a massive failure by this federal government. They're trying to figure out a way out of this, but at the end of the day, a basic check of this individual's background could have done this. But the even more outstanding part of this whole story, and I do say it with a lot of sarcasm, is that his job, the company's job, was to come out and educate Canadian broadcasters about anti-racism. It is absolutely unbelievable. It is only something this Liberal government could come about. So anyway, so let's bring on Michelle Ferrari, Member of Parliament for Peterborough Coworth, also the Shadow Minister for Tourism, my next door neighbour. Thank you, Michelle, for coming on the show once again. Jamie, always a pleasure to have my uh, brother MP right well, in the riding. We'll do the tourism. I know that's you. that's your focus here, but Let's talk about that that last issue first. My goodness. So you you hire somebody, so the federal government hires somebody to to educate others about anti-racism. But this individual's social media history is filled with the exact same the exact thing he was supposed to be teaching against. It makes no sense whatsoever. Where is the due diligence? Where is a little bit of checking before you give out $133,000 of taxpayer money? Yeah, I mean, I think uh Epic fail would be an understatement here, Jamie, and a real slap in the face to, you know, the members of parliament within our house, but in particular within the Liberal Party who are of Jewish descent, you know, who are Jewish. I mean, how how offensive is that? And I, I just think it's, I just, I think there's always an opportunity to say, holy, we really messed up. We really messed up here. We're going to make this right. Let's fix it right now. You know, we have the prime minister coming out um, doing a national press conference about, you know, uh, what happened to Minister Freeland, about everybody uniting and fighting against this and silence on this case. And it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. Um, you know, Anthony Housefather, Liberal MP, has asked on, on Twitter this morning, I've really appreciated those colleagues from all parties who have condemned the anti-Semitism and hate expressed by Marouf and agreed he and his organizations as part of should not receive government funding. I call on all 338 MPs to say this. You know, so from within your own party, like fix it. Yeah, absolutely. But where was the department to go through the the due diligence on this? A quick background check. This is one hundred thirty three thousand dollars. I know to to some people it may not be that much to, but for a ton of people, that's a lot of money just to be given away willy nilly without a care in the world. This is absolutely unbelievable. At a time when governments can't seem to get the small things right, they can't issue passports. They can't seem to figure out how to get two million files in the immigration backlog fix. They can't get veterans the benefits they want. This is a, a total failure one after the other with this, this government. Airports are a disaster. It just goes on and on and on with no light at the end of the tunnel, it seems. And the NDP is just going along with this. Yeah. And I think you've hit the nail on the head. And I think doing what you and I do on a daily basis, which is listen to Canadians, the number one issue across the board for the failure is a lack of accountability and transparency. There's no checks and balances. And as a consequence, you have this 
fail after fail and hypocrisy after hypocrisy because there's just no accountability. So I think that's the number one thing, you know, when we um, get elected and we're government, it's it's about accountability and transparency, which which is the number one thing that needs to change when we talk about effective government. And it's it's a shame because I think the story really needs to be brought to the light of day, but already it's it's almost gone from the mainstream media headlines. It's 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 shocking how quickly this disappeared. Because you don't have that, you know, the mainstream media, as you've worked in too, Jamie, you understand how they work. They need that shock value and then they carry it and carry it and carry it. So what happened to Minister Freeland in Alberta, right? It was this shock value of a video, right? And for whatever reason, it's again, liberal paid media kind of grabs a hold of that and, and moves forward with it when you have something significantly bigger on the government's account. What happened to Minister Freeland is completely disgusting and gross, but it was individual responsibility of a person who can't manage his emotions and needs help and needs to be held accountable for that. But this is under government legislation. You gave money to a known anti-Semite, to, uh, to a known racist. So it's, it's backwards in what uh, priorities are of, of covering in the media. Absolutely. And we can condemn both, right? We can condemn what happened to Minister Freeland. We also have to call out this at the same time, absolutely. which is wrong as well. Yeah, absolutely. And right? I think but it seems we got tunnel vision here. We, you yeah. know, this thing, the, the, this racist getting the taxpayer dollars. Well, wait a second. There's something over here. We need to focus in on that. And anyone who opposes the government's an evil, awful, horrible human being. But don't worry about this stuff that we actually gave away and approved. No. And I think you can't deny that the timing of the Liberals' announcement yesterday, I believe it was, with the $100 million to, um, you know, the 2LGBTQI, um, 2S LGBTQI, you know, it's almost, again, their classic tactic of distraction. We're doing something over here good, so don't look over here. And, uh and it's very, it's very obvious when we're inside. And Jamie, I think you and I are on the inside and we see it so often. You've been doing this a lot longer than I have. But for the people on the outside, they don't, it's not always there front and center if it's not covered fairly on the media. Yeah, you really have to be, you do have to be paying attention every single day to see the, the switch and, and how things are covered. Uh, we could go on about that. I, I do have so much more, but I only have so much time in the program. And I do want to talk to you about your portfolio tourism. Uh, August 27th article came out. It looks like a third of Canadian tourism operators closing down or selling in the next little while. The COVID-19 pandemic uh, just decimated the tourism industry. We're talking about businesses and the tourism sector took on loads of debt just to keep above water to, to hopefully at one point open for business again, provide the services and opportunities and the experiences for those who who want it to, to see the country. Um, it, it's just showing that they, they, they are so far underwater, a lot of them won't survive. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, what's really fascinating about tourism, Jamie, is it is literally, if you want the economy to recover, this is where it will happen. So when we look at what tourism is and how it sort of spider webs, it's such a hard industry to quantify when we look at travel business and regular tourism. This is responsible for so much of our economy across the country, right? So let's take a little community like mine, for example, Lakefield. And how do you quantify the people who maybe live in the trailer park and come across and spend money in the grocery store, at the gas stations, um, at the shops? Um, then you have, you know, when I was up in Iqaluit this week, all the travel business, how much that's contributing to the economy and, and, and holding that community. And so when you look at what tourism was, which was one in 10 jobs pre-COVID, and now you have businesses, this is it, like this is the year that, that they are saying, we, we can't, we can't survive anymore. And there just hasn't been the investment um, in tourism. And you've had a bit of pushback as well from people because they often look at it through the lens of the traveler or the tourist and where they don't look at it and why it's so valuable is they need to look at it through the lens of the business that is operational because of tourism because of the traveler. So you need to flip your lens a little bit and look at it through the eyes of the business that is is feasible, is, is viable because of the industry. And so if these little tiny mom and pop shops crumble, 
the economy, the inflation, all of that further crumbles. And so they just haven't had the support that they've needed. They haven't had the recovery. The biggest issue overseeing all of this is travel confidence, a lack thereof. You can't make travel plans because you don't know what rules are gonna change tomorrow. You go to the website, they make no sense. Your passport delays. You have no travel confidence and you have software that is destroying the industry. The Arrive Can app, you know, it's absolutely destroying the industry. So there has a, there's so much opportunity to help and, and help our economy and help our inflation by investing in tourism. Because I think that's the other thing too. People do not think of all the spider webs, your hair, your nails, the dog kennel, uh, the grocery stores. It's huge. It's a huge, huge industry that um, needs, needs to recover for the economy too. Two things I want to pick up on what you had just mentioned. Um, the trust in government. I, I think that was something that, Remember way back when the Delta variant was starting to, to wane a bit, uh, some of the economy was opening up, travel started to opening up and people started to think about it. But a lot of people stayed home. And if you look, and I know you did, but you look at some of the, the comments in time in, 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 in the survey, is people weren't necessarily afraid so much of COVID. They were more afraid of the government not only changing the rules, but making it extremely difficult for people to travel. So this wasn't a, a free market choice, right? This wasn't the market holding people back. This was the government potentially about to throw up some barriers or make it very difficult for you to get out. Yeah, and you think about people, Jamie, who've saved, you know, maybe they've waited their whole life. Like I have story after story, people, it's their dream vacation. They lost $5,000. They, they're never going to see that money again. So you hear these horror stories. And so then do you book a trip? No, you, you most definitely don't because you don't have any confidence or trust that it's actually going to be okay. And that is the number one issue that we have seen. And, and travel plans 18 months out, right? So we knew everybody was telling everybody what was going to happen. Now we've lost another travel season because of a lack of travel confidence. And, and we don't see any, any light at the end of the tunnel. I was recently on a flight coming out of uh, a Callowit going to Ottawa and by no fault of the airlines, okay, they're following the rules of the government. The man comes, the, the air or flight attendant says, okay, if you don't wear your mask, you will be subject to a $5,000 fine and met with security when you get off the plane. And these are the kinds of like approaches that the government has taken of this aggressive and then, but, but let's not talk about the fact that as soon as you get off the plane, you take off your mask. Like, how is that science? How is that science? And so you have, and, and then arrive can, so people getting threatened. One woman, and I, I shared this, she was on Global National. She was uh, threatened with a million dollar fine and it was their glitch. It was their glitch. And the government's we, glitch. Yes, yes, it was their glitch. The government's, the, their arrive can app glitch. And so you have people, Canadians by nature are very accommodating. We fall, like we're very accommodating people and we do what we're told for the most part. But when you're doing what you're told and it makes no sense and then you're threatened and intimidated, how do you expect an industry to recover from that? So well, it, you, you're seeing it in, in some places, but people are pushing back. Look at Western University. In, in Ontario, mandating masks on campus and a third booster shot. The students are saying, why at that point? And, and even the medical officer of health just next door, Haldeman Norfolk came on and said, you're, you're not following the science. The science are on the, the people's side who are pushing back against the, the, the university imposing these conditions upon them. And I think it's about why do we not why do the liberals, why does the government not trust Canadians? Because they have no reason not to trust Canadians. Canadians, like I said, they're very good people. Like, and that lack of trust, it, it's created a mass, it's caused all of this, this uproar and this divide because nothing they, they're doing, the liberals are doing is making sense. And it's making people very, very uh, upset 
um, and divided. Well, I, I think some people don't feel that the, the government's even listening to them at that point as well. Mm -hmm. it, it just seems to be, we're, we're going to use the force of government to, to punish those who disagree with us instead of just trusting Canadians as a whole to make the best decisions based on their individual circumstances. And you know, it's funny, you have, I'm sure you have this conversation often too, Jamie, where people were like, no, yeah, like COVID, like it was, it was this and now it's that. It's changed, it's evolved, we've evolved and and people are ready to to trust each other. You know, like I trust you to make whatever makes you feel safe, Jamie. If you wanna wear your mask, you go right ahead. You wanna do that, but it's it's created this divide because of how it was managed through lack of leadership that you're a bad person, you're a misogynist, you're a racist, you're a horrible person if you don't do um, what I say. And uh, it's not good, it's not good. And we need to restore travel confidence so that we can get the tourism industry recovered so we can get the economy recovered. Couldn't say it better myself. As you know, Michelle, I always give the guests the final word, so I will turn it over to you. But I, I like always, I say this every show, there's so many more questions I could keep going on and on and on, but uh, unfortunately only so much time. So the floor is yours. Well, thanks, Jamie. I, I think we are we're coming into an era of hope. And I think that's what's really going to keep us going because I think hope is the glue that allows you to go on when you think you can't. And I think, you know, people have hit a breaking point. They're genuinely struggling to survive. Um, putting food on the table, finding housing. Most people, young people have given up hope of that at all. So I think, you know, the blueprint and the conservatives are ready um, to put hope back in people's lives and to say, listen, we're going to hold, we're going to have a government that's accountable and transparent. We're going to have a government that offers the services that you pay for. And we're going to have a government that your base for normal is not terrible backlogged service. And that's, that's the gist of it. We need to restore trust and it's going to take time, but I think, you know, I think there's hope on the horizon. Um, and we can do this and we believe and we understand that Canadians are good people and that we can restore our economy and uh, put people back in a place of of believing and trusting their neighbor. I, I would hope so, but it seems like they, the, the Liberals are on a path of bringing down the bar of what is acceptable, right? As you said, terrible. Then that if it's terrible for a long period of time, that becomes the new normal. And uh, I, I don't think that's a, a good thing at all. So hopefully we will be able to uh, get a change in government very soon. But in order to do that, we need your help. If you liked what you heard, what you saw today, please like, comment, subscribe, share this program. Together, we can push back against that ever-moving liberal agenda. If you can't watch or listen to the entire program, you can tell your friends about it too. Download it, listen to it. Platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, you name it, it is out there. New content every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Until then, remember, low taxes, less government, more freedom. That's the blueprint.